2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 14 through 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 14 through 17. The title message is, Are You Really Saved? Are You Really Saved? 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 14 through 17. Are you really saved? The Bible says, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 14, For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge that if one die for all, then we're all dead, and that he die for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Wherefore, henceforth know we no man after the flesh, Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. Verse 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Brother Jay, can you please pray for the message? Father God, we thank you once again for gathering us here in our bible in church to listen to your word. We ask you, Lord, that you fill each and every one of us with the Holy Spirit, fill the pastor with the Holy Spirit, given the liberty and the authority to preach a word with, with all power and with sound doctrine and come to our hearts, minds, and ears to your word so that we can change. Lord God, pray for the unsaved people Pray that you convict them of their sin, righteousness, and judgment so that they can get saved. Protect us from the devil's attacks and pray that all things that are said and done will be done for your glory and honor. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Are you really saved? Bible says, for by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourself, it is the gift of God, not of works as any man should boast, in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. So you're saved by grace through faith, and it's free gift of salvation. However, this day and age, many people aren't really saved. They confess to be saved, but they really aren't. They know everything about the gospel. And especially people who grew up inside the church, very religious people whose parents may be, you know, pastor, minister, deacon, whatever it may be, they tend to be confused and they tend to rely on their birth and they think that they're going to heaven. They do sinner's prayers, prayer just like everybody else. However, they don't trust Jesus Christ and him alone to go to heaven if you ask him. I was born into a family, religious family. Don't you know who my dad is? My dad is Joe Austin. You know? <laughs> don't you know what I do, right? You know, I am the elder of the church. They don't even know the meaning of elder deacon, especially, you know, Korean churches out there. And they go, you know what? Do you know who you're talking to? I saw Jesus in the clouds. In my dream, Jesus talked to me. Of course, I received him as my Lord and Savior because he talked to me. Yeah. Yeah. And too many people are following their feelings, right. trying to go to heaven, but at the end of the day, they're going to burn in hell. Amen. You know, as our brothers were teaching over the Thanksgiving week, one thing really clearly stood out when it comes to doctrine of Holy Spirit, right? Sins against the Holy Spirit, personality of Holy Spirit, baptism against Holy Spirit. Many people are just so confused. And especially charismatic, Pentecostal, Catholic, Presbyterian, because a lot of people, almost everybody now, all these religions, they're coming together, yeah. and they have a foundation, and they have this one common thing, they go by experience, mm, right? Yes. 
Catholics, right? You know, I saw Mary, you know, crying and the blood came out of her eyes, right? You hear that here and there, yeah. you know, and then you see Presbyterian. Oh, man, I started speaking in tongues, right? They don't even know what tongues are. You know, according to the word of God, tongues are language. Amen. It's not gibberish. It's not hallelujah repeated a thousand times. Amen. And many people think that just because they have certain type of experience, that is their foundation of faith. Salvation is so simple that even a little child can get saved. Amen. All they have to do is trust in Lord Jesus Christ. That's it. Him alone. But it's also the hardest thing. Why? Because once you do not trust Jesus Christ to go to heaven, but if you add something else in between, especially before, then you got to check your salvation. Yes. How can you say, I trust Jesus Christ and Him alone to go to heaven, but when you are really trusting your Holy Spirit experience to go to heaven? Oh. Right? Yeah. yeah, you know, I spoke in tongues. I did blah, 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 blah. Right? And I was praying, and I felt like something came inside of me. Woo. A lot of times it's the devil. Yeah. Right? If not all the time. And then, you know, I felt like new. I mean, some people will say, I woke up one day and suddenly I want to be nice to everybody. Wow. You hear that a lot, you know? And I'm a horrible person. Yes, you are. Everybody's a horrible Amen. person. You're born as a sinner on your way to hell. You're naturally weak, so you don't have to try. Yes. But, you know, now, you know, like I, when I look at the nature, they, it looks like they're singing to me. You know, flowers are smiling at me. You know, I'm more nice to my wife, my children, my husband, and I feel good. I feel like I want to go to church. You know, that's like their testimony. Are you really saved? You're not. Amen. Having the heart to go to church is not, does not mean that you're saved. That's right. Saying that you do this and do that and also plus Jesus Christ, you're not saved. Right. Only faith alone in Jesus Christ. If you rely only on Jesus Christ to go to heaven, you're saved. Yeah. Simple as that. Amen. Right? But if you're relying on anything else, you, you got to check your salvation. You know, many times when you witness to Pentecost and Charismatics, now, in the past, gospel was given to them first. They believed the gospel, and then they started following the experiences in America. But like countries like Korea and other places, experience went first. And then gospel went later. So what happens? Gospel has no use anymore. Yeah. Because they're already trusting in their feelings and experience to go to heaven. So it doesn't matter if your heart says, you know what? I'm going to heaven because I'm speaking in tongues. I experience. I have a Holy Spirit experience. I have a fire Holy Spirit experience, which is like you want to burn in hell, right? Yeah. And they're like, oh, you know, I could go to heaven like this. Okay, now as a secondary, third or fourth, as the last resort, you know, I'm still going to accept Christ as my Lord and Savior. It doesn't work that way. No, sir. Yeah, your heart is not 100% trusting Christ alone to go to heaven. That's why... Just remember when you accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, I can read your heart. You know your heart. That's why, you know, when people come to our church, we ask, are you saved? Literally, are you saved? If you were to die right now, do you know for sure you go to heaven? And people give their testimony. And if you say, you know what? You know, I was a rotten sinner. I'm still rotten, but I'm a sinner on my way to hell. You know, we're repenting hard. I received Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. Through his blood of atonement, I'm saved. Okay, you're saved. <laughs> You don't have to add anything. But once you start opening your mouth and start saying, you know what? Holy Spirit. You know, that's a, always a key word. Key word. Holy Ghost. You know, I had a Holy Ghost experience, you know, in my 20s. I went to a tent meeting back in the day. You know, Oral Robert was there. And man, and then, you know, I, I, I had healings everywhere. You know, someone had a, like a big lump on their stomach. And then they had a, you know, healer touch her. And then it was gone. Wow. Come to find out, she had a balloon underneath her, and then she just let the air go out. <laughs> That's how wicked these healers are. Oral Roberts, well-known, you know, Pentecostal healer, during one of his meetings, there was an accident. Like seven people got hurt. He called an ambulance. According to Mark 17 and 18, if you have the gift of healing like that, yeah. you should just go touch people and they should be healed. Come on. No one needed to, especially when Jesus Christ was healing and the disciples were healing people. No one needed to pray. You don't need no faith. 
They just touch you and then you get healed. Yeah. That tells you you're a crook. Amen. You're a crock. You're a carnalist. You're a fraud. Yes. Using people's emotions and their you know, fragile bodies, right, to get money. I could be a millionaire. I'll tell you guys a secret. You know, I read in Dr. Ruckman's book. <laughs> if any of you guys get sick, I just go to the hospital. Maybe 10 of you guys get sick. You're at hospital. I go to 10 different people. And then one of them healed, right? Yeah. Then I say, you know what? Because, you know, I was there and then we pray, you know, because of the faith that I've given you, you know, you're, you got healed. Like, and then the person started testifying to everybody, right? And then, you know, I go on a radio or show, podcast, you know, I have the gift of healing. You know, I, you know one of my members, you know, here, I brought her today. And you know what happens? People are going to start sending me money. They're like, oh, man. If I get connected to that preacher, there's a chance. And these are, we're talking about these poor people yeah. who may have cancer, who's going through you know, a lot of health issues, but they want some hope. Mm -hmm. They want to get healed one, or the, one way or the other. So you know, back in the day, touch the TV screen. You know, when the healers are out there, those crooks, and they think that they'll be healed that way. When they hear some of those crooked healers, they think that, you know, if I touch the radio where the voices come out, they'll be healed, right? Yeah. You know, that's how you grow it. That's why, you know, Benny Hinn's of the world are millionaires. Yeah. Yeah, because people are desperate. And then the most wicked way, the worst of worst sinners are what? Using the word of God to benefit their own bellies. That's what they do. That's why, you know, that's why we live in a, such a wicked world right now. Amen. That's why if I were to ask you a question, if any person, whether you come to our church or you're outside of church, if anybody asks you, are you saved? You shouldn't be offended. Amen. You got to check your salvation if you get offended. Like, that means that you're not really trusting in Jesus Christ alone. Why? Because if you're trusting Jesus Christ alone, you're so thankful that you'll just tell him. Amen. But if you're trusting something else, and then if someone goes a little deeper, right? Okay. So you just said that you had a Holy Spirit experience. So what does that mean, you know? You know? What about Jesus Christ? Yeah. I mean, did you accept Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior? Yeah. Right? If you're truly a saved person, you are happy to see someone who's also saved because you're body of Christ. Yes. And if they were to ask you, are you saved? If I go to another church, if they ask, you know, then my first reaction will never be, yeah, you know, I'm a pastor. How dare you ask me, right? <laughs> well, that's what people do. I'll be like, oh, I mean, through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen, brother. Amen, sister. Right? If anybody have that kind of heart right now, man, I wonder. Man, I'm not saying you're not safe, so don't put words in my mouth, but check your salvation. Yeah. What's wrong with my heart? If someone were to ask me, are you saved? Why did I become so defensive? Mm. What do I, why do I give such a wrong testimony? Why does Holy Spirit experience just come up first? Am I really saved? That's why, you know, when we have salvation testimony time, you know, when we ask, you know, if someone, if you're saved, we ask. You know, it's a, such an important event in your life, yeah. the most important. Do you remember when you got saved? It doesn't have to be exact date, exact time, but you should remember, yes. right? I mean, I think second most decision you do is like marriage, right? After you get saved. Yes. Are you telling me that you don't know when you got married? <laughs> if someone asks you? Well, we have, you know, Caleb and Josh, you know, and we have, you know, this is Katie and this is Sumi, you know, they got married within like last couple of years. I ask him, oh, do you know when you got married? If they tell me, I don't know, there's big issues, right? <laughs> right? I mean, they should remember when they got married, yeah. right? One in October and one in December. And if they give me wrong month, you know, I don't know. They better check something. <laughs> but they will remember and they'll give you the right answer. Because that is very, very important event in their life. Even 20, 30 years from now, if Lord tarries, they will still remember. Yes. You will still remember. But when it comes to salvation, which is the most important event of your life, if you got gotten saved, how do you not remember when that happened? Right? 
Even a little kids, when they truly know that they're sinner on their way to hell and they accept Jesus Christ, their Savior, they have their clear testimony. And there were only four, five, six. Because that was the event, the best event ever happened to their life. Happened in my life as well back in 1998, April. So if you can't say that, don't just say you're so technical. Don't just say you're, you're nitpicky. No, I just want to make sure that you're saved. Amen. People want to make sure that you're saved. Why do you even want to take chance of burning in hell for eternity? Shouldn't you be thankful? Yes. Because they care about your soul. I care about your soul. You know, don't get offended and don't give a you know, fit like little kid, spoiled child, right? You know, like, oh, what are you doing to me? What are you asking me? You know, you're asking me again. You don't like me. You don't love me or something, huh? No, I care about you. That's why. And if your testimony has a questionable testimony, and if you are constantly saying feelings, if you're constantly saying Holy Spirit experience, if you're constantly saying speaking in tongues and seeing a vision, then you have to check your salvation. Yes. Because according to 2 Corinthians 5.17, you are not in Christ. That's it. If any man be in Christ, you're in Christ when you trust Jesus Christ and Him alone as your Lord and Savior. You turn from your own ways and turn to God. And he's a new creature. Then you and I are a new creature if we only trusted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Then if you are really saved, then there's got to be some changes that has happened in your life. That's why some people, like before and after they got saved, they're actually worse, you know. There are certain Christians who's backslidden so much, they're worse than even before they got saved. But majority, they're different, right? And some, they went to heaven early because they still stayed in their sin, right? But you ask yourself, like, number one, has there been a spiritual change? If you're really saved, Spiritual change has happened, right? The days that you had no conviction, the days that you didn't care anything about the sins in the world, you start caring now, right? I mean, doing these wicked things, wicked thoughts, it didn't bother you at all. But since Holy Spirit is in you now, you're being convicted. Since Jesus Christ is in you now, you're being convicted. It's like there's like a change. When you read the word of God, it's different, right? Natural man cannot receive things of God. That's what the Bible says. You have to get saved. That's why so many unsaved scholars out there, they read the word of God because, you know, they're supposedly intellectual. They read it 200, 300 times, but they don't get the truth. Why? Because they're not saved. And when it comes to the topic of Holy Spirit, how do you receive Holy Spirit anyways? Right? People think that you, know, you, you have to pray and then suddenly you, know, you have to feel some experience coming your way. They think that you have to speak in tongues is the way to receive Holy Ghost, right? But you don't. You receive Holy Ghost when you trust Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior Amen. by faith. Let's go to Galatians chapter 3. So if you ever have anyone come and talking to you, this nonsense about Holy Ghost and stuff, you have to go through, you know, speaking in tongues, you have to see visions and stuff, just go to Galatians 3. Galatians chapter 3, let's look at verse 2. Galatians 3 verse 2. The Bible says, This only would I learn of you. Received ye the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? So you receive Holy Spirit, how? By faith. Amen. How clear is that? Yes. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Let's go to verse 14. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through what? Through tongues? Speaking tongues? Through visions, through dancing, jumping up and down, praise and worship, through like praying, you know, 40 days and 40 nights? No. Bible says 
that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So through faith, Amen. you know, we receive Holy Ghost. What more? There's to it, right? You know, everybody goes to the book of Acts, right? You know, Acts chapter 2, chapter 10, chapter 19, it all deals with Jewish folks, right? And what's the common thing about Jewish nation? They require a sign. They require a sign. You don't require a sign to get saved, right? You have the word of God. I mean, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 22. Because you really have to check your salvation. Because if you don't check today, you might die today. Yeah. Then if you are not really saved, and if you trusted anything other than blood atonement of Jesus Christ to save you from hell, his perfect sacrifice, and you trusted like any part of, you know, Pentecostal charismatic movement of feelings, then you got burning hell. I'm sorry. Then what do you got to do? You got to reject anything that you believed before and trust only Jesus Christ. It literally, you got to say, Lord, I reject you know, all those feelings that I trusted, speaking in tongues that I trusted, you know, Holy Spirit experience I trusted. I know it's wrong according to the word of God. So I reject them all. I only trust Jesus Christ and him alone as my Lord and Savior. Then you're saved. Amen. But if you did not do that, then you have to check your salvation. Yes. Because too many people that we've encountered and talked to this day and age, because devil is so subtle and devil is so smart. Yes. He want to take as many people to hell. Yes. So they're going to, it's half and half. Watch out. Salvation is full. You can never be half saved. Yeah. You can never be 90% saved. Either you're 100% saved or you're not saved. That's it. And then they're gonna, the devil's going to confuse you with the false preachers and teachers out there saying that, okay, receive Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, but you've got to trust that Holy Spirit experience. Oh. Do you have it? Man, then how in the world are you even going to have assurance of salvation? Yeah. That's why people who trust in Holy Spirit experience, they don't have assurance of salvation. You point at them. If you kill me right now, do you know for sure you go to heaven? No, I need more Holy Spirit experience. I need to speak in tongues for 20 hours, you know. No, they don't have anything like that. Because their basis of their salvation is on their feelings and experience. So you have to watch out. If you're trusting any experience and feelings as part of your salvation... You have to check your salvation. Amen. There's highly likelihood that you're not safe. Yes. And don't ever say that, oh, I, I, I'm safe for sure. But your testimony says otherwise. Yeah. And I don't know either, right? That's how you check it. You double check it. Yes. Especially children, you triple check them, right? Yes. They might have been scared. That's why they repeated a prayer after you. Yes. That's how you check them. I don't want spanking from my mom and my dad, you know, so I'm just going to say what they tell me to do, right? You know, but... That's why you check him. You check him, right? 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 22. The Bible says, Wherefore, tongues are for a sign. Okay? So tongues are for a sign. Not to them that believe. I mean, if you're a saved Christian, why are you speaking in tongues in the church in the first place? Yeah. First of all, you don't even know what it means, right? Tongues are language, like a spoken language that people could understand. It's not gibberish, right? Amen. And it's to them, <laughs> not to them that believe, right? So right away, if any church is speaking in tongues and stuff and Pentecostals and Charismatics, they're already going against the Word of God. They don't yes. even know, right? I mean, they're, uh, seriously, they're just a bunch of unsafe sinners just playing, you know, hokey pokey with each other in these gibberish prayers, right? Yes. And they think that they're all spiritual and stuff. You know? I don't know if you've met many Charismatics or Pentecostals, especially it's so big in, you know, Asian culture, especially Korean. They're the, I mean, they're, they're, they're the proudest people I've ever met because they rely on it. They're so proud. I bet you can talk in hallelujahs. I could talk better than you. You know, I'll, I'll just mix all my Spanish learnings in school days and then mix it up. You know, deals, deals, meals, and all that stuff. And they'll be like, oh, man, oh, you're spiritual than me. Amen. Yeah, I mean, that's how, how deceived they are. 
Let's go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 22. Wherefore, tongues are for a sign, not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. And these are for unbelieving Jews, right? Unbelieving Jews. Well, put, hold your finger there. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 1, 22. Here we go. You know what? Tongues are for me. I'm Hispanic. I'm Caucasian. I'm African American. And I'm Korean. Japanese, Filipino, this is for me. I don't think so. Let's look at what the Bible says. Don't get mad at me or, you know, brethren here. Get mad at the Bible. 1 Corinthians one twenty two. Who requires a sign? For the Jews require a sign. Jews. Not you. Not, actually, I, I'm physical Jew. I told you guys, right? My last name is Jew, so I could actually play it. Bless the Jews. Yeah. Bless me and my brother and my family. We're the Jews, right? But I don't see any of you guys Jews. Actually, Kevin Jew. You know, Kevin, <laughs> Kevin's a Jew too. So, but Jews require a sign. Not you and me. Amen. And the Greeks seek after wisdom. Right? I mean, it says strive for prophecy like the word of God. Right? But if you're a Jew, because then, I mean, it started with signs, right? Nation of Israel. Like Moses had to show sign back in Exodus chapter 4. So they require sign. So God uses sign with Jewish nation. Not you, not me. Yes. And so don't misinterpret the word of God and then put it somewhere so that you could deceive people so that you could tell people lies about the word of God and say that, you know, this is for me. And then one of the things that these crooked people, these liars, you know, these carn artists will always say is that, oh, you know, in, the, in Corinthians, you know, you know, angels spoke, you know, it's celestial language and stuff. You know. Actually, people understood their language. If you go to the book of, you know, Matthew 120, you know, let's go. Let's go to Matthew 120. They're like, that's why, you know, you don't understand what I'm saying because it's a celestial language. You know what? Angels spoke language and they understood. Yeah. Yeah. Like likely Hebrew tongue. Yes. Hebrew language. Matthew 1, verse 20. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph. Well, I mean, if he spoke in a gibberish, I don't think Joseph would have understood. No. You know? I mean, if I were, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. I don't think you would understand me. But if I said, do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? You, if you go like this or say yes, then you understand. Look at it. Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. Okay, so it's a language. Even the celestial being, like angels speaking, the Bible, language that are comprehensible. And let's, I mean, just go one, I mean, let's, let's see one more. Luke chapter 1, Luke chapter 1, Luke chapter 1, verse 19. That's why... You know, you have to be grounded in the right doctrine, and you have to be able to defend the, the truth that we believe in. Yes. And you have to make sure that all these charismatic Pentecostals, Presbyterian, everybody who's trusting in tongues and, you know, experience to find the truth and get saved. I mean, that's the job of Bible-believing Christians. Amen. Let's go to Luke chapter 1, verse 19. The Bible said, and the angel answering said unto him, Okay, so I'm speaking to an angel. If angel, I couldn't communicate with him, I wouldn't understand. But I am Gabriel that stand in the presence of God and am sent to speak unto thee and to show thee these glad tidings. Obviously, they understood. So you can't give gibberish about excuses that, you know, speaking in tongue, you don't understand. It's not, you know, actual language because it's celestial. Yeah. You know what? It says you could understand. Amen. And then one other thing that they really, really misinterpret the word of God, I mean, is they go to Romans 8.26. Let's go to Romans 8.26. And sometimes you wonder, 
do they really know how to read? Right? Romans 8, verse 26. Romans chapter 8, verse 26. The Bible says, Likewise, the Spirit also help us our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself makes us intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Okay, it says groanings, right? It's not a tongue. Do you know, do you know the difference between groanings and tongue? I mean, how can you make that same? I am not white. I mean, I'm Asian. I'm not same. No. But you try to make a same, it's not going to work. Groaning is not tongue. So you, right away, you're, you're putting words into God's word. So tongues are for unbelieving Jews because they require a sign. And tongues are other languages that people can understand. That's why in Acts 2, when disciples were saying in different tongues, people from different regions actually understood what they were saying. Example, right? I mean, Yuki's from Japan, and suddenly back in the day, not right now, okay? Don't misinterpret, you know, you know this, you know, you crooks out there. You know, back in the day, you know, and then I'm like preaching, and suddenly I'm preaching in Japanese. I never heard, spoke Japanese in my life. You know, but I had, I was filled with the Holy Spirit. You know, I mean, you know, and then I'm speaking in Japanese so that Yuki could believe. Yes. Yeah, that's a sign. This person who has zero knowledge of my language suddenly is preaching in my language. Wow, that's a sign from God. Yes. So that's why it was happening. You know, a sign for Jews so that they could believe. Not for you and not for me. So if you ever had that experience of speaking in tongues and you thought it was from God, it's not from God. Amen. It's from the devil. Yes, sir. You and I have to be careful. And especially when you witness to others, you have to make sure that they understand. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. The reason the country goes downhill faster than ever before because we know there are wickedness in this world, but because Christians do not do their job, because Bible believers do not preach the word of God, they're always confined in their little circle and they don't do anything. They're not the light of the world. That's why this world is going down straight to hell faster than ever before. If you, as a Bible-believing Christian, do your job, learn the word of God, study the word of God, and be out there, preach the word of God, and witness to people, world wouldn't be like this. Yeah. But because many of the so-called Bible-believing Christians not doing anything, that's why it's getting worse and worse. We already know unsaved people, they're just wicked. They're wicked as they can be. They're, they're unsaved. Yes. Their father is the devil. But as a Christian, your father is God. I mean, you're supposed to do what the Bible says. Amen. But you don't do it. That's why the world's getting worse and worse and worse. I mean, if every... Christian who saved witness to maybe one or two, the whole world would have been saved by now. Yeah. But how many people actually witness? How many people actually lead people to the Lord? Very, very few. Yeah. And they don't even know how to witness in the first place. Rare. And you, as a Bible-believing Christian, you confess to be a Bible-believing Christian, you really have to check. Amen. You really have to really check your effort. You can't be a lazy Christian. Because what does devil do? Devil loses you to God once and for all. Yeah. So what does devil do? The best thing that he could do is make you lazy. Yes. No good Christians are always lazy Christians. So if you don't want to study the word of God, when learning about these tongues so that you could witness to those charismatic Pentecostal Presbyterian and everyone out there, and if this does not give you the jolt, Holy Spirit conviction, then something's wrong with you. You're so backslidden that you don't care about anything. You're a backslidden Christian. You're just like Lot, right? Mm -hmm. You just kind of lose everything. But if there's any seed of fire left in you, zeal for lost souls out there, 
you know, these things should rile you up. Because millions of people, if not billions, are on their way to hell because they're trusting in wrong doctrine. Yes. But you know the right doctrine. So what are you going to do about it? You're just going to hold it to yourself until you die, no. until the Lord comes back? You have to go out there and do your part. I'm not saying that you need to go to a charismatic church next door, knock on the door, and then start having an argument with them. No. no. You ask for opportunity. You pray for opportunity, and God's going to give you opportunity. Amen. You're going to meet some charismatics out there or something, especially when we're doing street preaching and stuff. We have many, many different types of people walk by, listen. Then there is one probably who's seeking the truth, who are deceiving the charismatic movement, and then you're that light to them. You're the only Bible they'll ever see, but they're not going to find it in their own church. So that's why... As Christians, especially Bible-believing Christians in a local church, you have to do your part. Amen. You have to have that urgency. Amen. If Lord is coming back soon, which you and I believe, yes. there should be an urgency in you to do more for the Lord. In order to do more for the Lord, you have to know the Word. Because you can't be just out there only knowing, you know, I'm not saying it's, it's the worst case because we have some crazy cuckoos out there. When we go street preaching, they just shout out two words, right? And I mean, what is it in Korean? Like, yesu chandang, you know, pushin jio, you know, Jesus, heaven, you know, unbelief, hell. Like, that's, that's all they say. You know, it's like almost like a chanting, like a Buddhist chanting. Oh, no. You know, forget about that crowd. But you... As a Bible-believing Christian who's blessed to have this truth and doctrine, yes. you have to study. Amen. If you don't, you're, obviously you're disobeying the Word of God in the first place. Yes. Right, let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14. And let's start with verse 13. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. So there are fake apostles of Christ everywhere, yes. especially nowadays, right? I mean, that's why there's a bunch of apostolic churches out there, Pentecostal charismatic movement, right? Let's look at verse 14. So this is a key verse. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Are you trusting Seeing Jesus in your dreams, in a vision to go to heaven. You think you're really saved? No, you're trusting Satan yes. to go to heaven. God's not going to send you a vision to get saved right now. Amen. After Bible's completed during this church age. Thank you, Lord. So then faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Thank you. Romans chapter 10, verse 17. You, through the word of God, you get saved. That's it. Amen. Don't trust in your feelings. Don't trust in your experience to go to heaven. Then are you really saved? I have to really question. You have to question. Let's look at verse 15. Therefore, it is no great thing if his, in, his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness. Man, we have so many, so many fakers out there, right? Oh, they call themselves, even Baptists out there. Oh, you know, I'm a Baptist. Don't you think we teach Salvation? I don't know. Tell me. Man, don't get offended. <laughs> Just tell me, right? It's like when someone right away says, do you know who I am? Then you have to check. Yes. Yeah. I know what you are. You're a sinner on your way to hell, Amen. already condemned to burn in hell. That's it. That's it. Yes. You and I are nothing better than that. Right? According to the word of God, you know, you and I are nothing, less than nothing. So don't you tell me that, you know, you're a big shot at yeah. a church. Your family is a big shot at a church. Don't you say, you know, I'm a deacon, pastor, minister. It doesn't matter. Are you really saved by trusting Jesus Christ and him alone? Because you might be that, you know, workers of unrighteousness, pretending to be, you know, real Bible believer. That's why, yeah, don't get offended, brethren or anyone listening when you first come to our church. If someone comes up to you and says, are you saved? We have to. It's our duty. You know? 
I'd rather offend you than offend Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, I don't want to offend my Lord and Savior. And then he said, preach the word, then I have to preach the word. Yes. And then if you get offended because of that, then you talk to the word of God. You, <laughs> if you're truly saved, you know, talk to the Lord at the judgment seat of Christ. Yes. But I'd rather offend you left and right, up and down, than to offend my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I mean, the question comes always as a Christian. Do you want to please the Lord or do you want to please man? Simple as that. If you are hesitant, if someone comes to our church because, oh, it's their first time. We have to keep them in. We have to hold them, you know, like all those you know, <laughs> prosperity or, you know, people who's going after the money. You know, they seem like they're going to give a lot of tithe. You know? There's no way I'm going to offend them. I'll never ask them how to get saved, right? You know, I'll just preach, right? You know, but, you know, I'm not going to go one-on-one -on -one and ask them because I'm going to offend them. <laughs> you are that workers of iniquity, right? You are that person who's sending more and more people to hell. You need to realize, right? Yes. We're not in this business, this God's ministry, to please people. Amen. We're here to only please Lord Jesus Christ. Obviously, you got to use wisdom, right? You, that's what spiritual growth is all about. You pray to the Lord. Don't let your flesh go first before you. You kill the flesh. You know, let the Holy Spirit lead you. Let the Word of God lead you as you you know, approach and witness to people. Because people all have, understand the attitude. And that's one thing that I think Bible believers have to be careful. Just because you know more than the other people, don't ever let your knowledge puff you up. Yes. They just haven't had the opportunity or blessing like you and me to know the truth. So you do it as if you're doing it to your fellow brother and sister in Christ. Because if you're really saved, what happens? Right, you have a new family. You're no longer in devil's family. Amen. You're not under John 8, 44, year of your father, the devil. No, you're not. You are John 1, 12. You trust in Christ and receive me as your Lord and Savior. You're in the family of God. Then brothers and, brothers and sisters here are part of the body of Christ. They're part of you then you have to treat each other, what? If you're really safe, right? Like one body. Yes. You have to understand each other, right? You have to show some charity, which is love. Love is what? Love is not mere words only. Yes. It's all about action. Amen. It's all about sacrifice. You know, I think after you first get saved, you have such love for your family that you want them to get saved, right? Those are the people that you witness to first, your loved ones, right? And after a while, that, you know, that excitement and joy and first love fizzles out usually. So you have to go back to it. You know, you got to find that first love. You got to find that first love for the lost souls out there. You got to find that first love as you serve Jesus Christ. You got to find that first love how you deal with your family. Because like I said from the beginning, you know, if you're truly saved, you're a different person. You should be a different person. If I were to talk to your friend of, you know, past 10 years, and then after you've been saved for five years, and then if I talk to them, they should tell me that, hey, so-and-so is so different. What happened? Amen. You know, salvation happened. Yes. You know, Jesus Christ went into his heart. Amen. You know? He has Holy Ghost, Amen. the right way, through faith, yes. right? right? That's type of testimony that you and I should have. It shouldn't be, uh, he's same, she's same. <laughs> Is she even a Christian? <laughs> Is he a Christian? Well, I didn't know. What, you're telling me they've been saved for 20 years? They, dude, I mean, they never told me about anything about Christianity. They're laughing at my dirty jokes. Wow. You know? We went to all the places like bars and stuff. Oh, no. I mean, they didn't drink per se, but they were enjoying the atmosphere and everything, right? Oh, I seen him smoke too, you know. 
Yeah, I seen them have some wine because they say wine is not an alcohol, you know. <laughs> See, that's the worst Christian out there. Amen. Bad testimony, bad light. You're darker than dark ashes out there to those people. So what, do, what happens to them eventually? They reject Christianity. Yes. They reject Jesus Christ. You know what, Johnny over there, you know, he said he's Christian, but nothing different. You know, eh. Jen over there, nothing different. No, I'm just going to be happy as who I am, you know, live merrily and then just die. You know, hopefully, just like that, enjoy my life. You have to ask yourself now, I mean, today we, it wasn't a long sermon, but it was very important. Yes. Because you have to ask yourself first, are you really saved? Am I really saved? Am I trusting only Jesus Christ and him alone to go to heaven? Have I trusted anything else? Have I included something like Holy Spirit experience and Jesus Christ to go to heaven? Then you have to reject that. And you have to only trust Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And if you have been saved, if you're truly saved, have you had any spiritual change? You have a new family in Christ. Do you treat them with charity? Do you sacrifice? Do you do? You show your love, not just with your words, but with your actions. I mean, do the world see that you are truly a saved Christian? If not... Man, you and I have a lot to talk about with the Lord. I mean, thank God that you could still confess your sins and get right. If that's what you got to do, you got to do. Amen. But before that, if you're, not, if you're not even a child of God, if you're still in the wrong family, then you have to get into the right family. If you don't remember when you really trusted Lord as your Lord and Savior, have, if you always had that, you know, false sense of security that I saw Jesus, I felt Jesus, I heard Jesus, I spoke in different tongues, gibberish. If you had those type of experience to, you know, rely on to go to heaven, then you have to reject them all. Amen. That's what repentance means. Turn away yes. and turn to God. Amen. With that repenting heart, then you have to trust Christ as your Lord and Savior. Then you could know for sure that you could go to heaven because you're only relying on the Lord Jesus Christ to go to heaven. Every head bowed and every eye closed. We live in a day, just like the Word of God says, there are many, many deceitful workers out there transforming themselves into the apostle of Christ. Many people are deceived, unfortunately. It shouldn't be you or me, especially we know the Word of God. If anyone here and anyone who's listening, if you don't know where you're going after you die, and if you have not trusted only Jesus Christ and Him alone to go to heaven, or if you trusted something else like your Holy Spirit experience to go to heaven, plus trusting Christ, repent of your ways. Reject whatever you believe in the past. And trust only Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and get saved. If you want to get saved right now, realizing that you're a sinner on your way to hell, you know, having willingness to turn from your ways and turn to God, receive Jesus Christ in this prayer as your Lord and Savior and get saved from hell. Dear God, I am a sinner. Please forgive all my sins. I turn from any wicked ways and thoughts, doctrines and thoughts and teachings that I've trusted to go to heaven. I reject them all, Lord. I believe that Jesus died for all my sins on the cross, shedding his precious blood. I only trust and I only accept Jesus Christ into my heart as my Lord and Savior to save me from hell. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. I mean, if you truly rejected and turned from all those false teachings that you trusted in the past and feelings that you trusted in the past and then trusted only Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. The Bible says you have eternal life. It's so simple, right? But as many as received him, to them gave you power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. 
John 1, 12. He that hath the has life. He that hath not the Son has not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. First John 5, 12 and 13. You can know now. Amen. You don't have to rely on your feelings anymore. You just go straight to your strongest evidence, which is the Word of God. Yes. Yeah. Are you really saved? Then, you know, brethren, you know, if you are already saved, there's a lot of work ahead for us. Yes. You have to do it. You can't be a lazy Christian. You got to be out there asking people, are you really saved? Amen. If you don't do it, they might never have any chance, right? Yeah. Let's pray. Dear Father, thank you for saving, from, saving us from hell. Amen. Thank you, Lord God, for the grace and mercy you've given to us. Thank you for giving us the truth. There are so many lost out there who think they're going to heaven, but they're trusting not only you, Lord, but everything else to go to heaven, Lord. I pray that we'll be that light to this lost world out there. Help us to study the word of God. Help us have love for those lost souls out there and witness to them, Lord. And I pray that we'll also understand that after we've gotten saved, you know, we have a new family. Help us to treat each other as you know, part of the body of Christ and help us have more charity, Lord. Help us not to be just you know, someone who just talks only, but be doers as well, Lord. I pray that you'll bless the rest of the day and the services. We we'll pray for especially those who are under the weather, who are going through sickness, Lord. Heal them according to us as soon as possible. And above all, even so come Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.